Thanks for joining us for What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind-the-scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Welcome to the What's New at CFI podcast. I'm Asim Khan, subject matter expert and instructor at CFI. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Duncan McKean. Thanks, Asim. And yes, delighted to be here and delighted to be talking about our new uh, FP&A courses. I understand you've been quite busy putting out a series of FP&A courses covering a number of subject areas. Could you give us a rundown, Duncan? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've been quite busy. This started off uh, in earnest last fall. It always starts with the model build process, uh, which is sort of the foundational exercise that needs to happen before a financial modeling course um, can get underway. And then uh, over the last few months, it's been busy recording uh, those, you know, on top of the the model for the FP&A courses. And it's an, it's an entire series. At this moment, there's There's three of them out that are live on our learning management system or LMS, but there's, there's another four coming out and then, and then even maybe another two after that coming out as well. And that covers uh, things from revenue forecasting to cost forecasting. Yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. We start off, we start off on the first one really with looking at sort of high level model design and and how you'd want to go about designing an FP&A model. We go through a lot of formatting, custom formatting, conditional formatting in that first course as well. And um, and we also talk a lot about the keyboard because it's not just about learning the model itself. It's about, you know, how can we be more efficient when we're when you're in and out of financial models all the time? And and so a big thing that we like to talk about at CFI and really encourage the learners to do is to break that addiction that they might have to the mouse <laughs> and start using the keyboard just to boost their efficiency way up. So yeah, we we always go through we always use the keyboard and encourage the everyone watching to learn use the keyboard as well when we're going through our courses. Right. That is a best practice sort of thing, right? Um so the model design module is uh is what is a prelude to the entire set of series, the F FP and anal- analytics that you're doing. FPNA is tricky. And this is why model design is important. Right. Mm-hmm. Can Definitely. Yeah. 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 And so model, model design is a funny thing. The first thing about model design is that most people just skip it. <laughs> like they, um, you, you, we think about if you were going to build a house and you, ha- you had a piece of property and you're going to build something on it, a cottage or a house. Well, the first thing you you would do would not be to go to like the hardware store and buy a bunch of lumber and nails and start hammering them together. The first thing you would do is, what do I want it to look like? You might start ripping, you know, pictures out of a magazine or sketching things up and you would start by designing. But yet when people build models, they often just jump right into Excel and start hammering in um, formulas and, and numbers and stuff like that. And they don't spend enough time on the design. And what we often find is if you spend up uh, time upfront on the design, then the model build process is so much faster. You, you save back more than that amount of time with the build. Um, and and what, what's the big deal, the big idea behind the cover page? The cover page is really, it's, First of all, it doesn't take long to build at all. It's very, very simple, but it's really like what you're doing with the cover page is it's your chance to establish a great first impression with your audience. You got to understand like what these models are doing. They're, they're decision-making tools and your audience is trying to make, you know, a very, very important and often large financial decision with the model. They're not going to be comfortable trusting the model as a tool unless they feel like it's been well put together, has good integrity, has model checks and all of these things. And so by putting together just a really, really nice cover page, you're you're really saying to them, hey, you we've spent the time to build this properly. It's, you know, it's best in class. And it's it's often just like it's like a PowerPoint presentation. There's always a cover page and, and models are really no different. So we like to think about them as not just spreadsheets that we built. Effectively, we format them and put them together so they're like a financial presentation. And it always starts off uh, with a cover page. I was viewing the cover page for your FP&A model today. Number one, it looks good, and it gives the impression that you intended it to give. Thirdly, it doesn't take long at all to put it together. Yeah, you know, no, it like really doesn't. Design the hyperlinks, that's, it's a matter of a few minutes work, and the payoff is big. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm glad you, I'm glad that you agree that it's literally, you'd be surprised at the number of people who skip over them or just put it together as an afterthought. You know, they just literally spend like three, oh, oops, I forgot a cover page. Let me throw something together quickly in, in 30 seconds. And we would um, recommend that they just sort of pause for a minute and say, wait, this is your first impression. You know, this is mm -hmm. the audience going to form their first impression based on what they see when they open up that cover page. So make sure it's sharp <laughs> and it's showing all the things that you want it to show. And also in the model design course, you made it an allusion or a reference to Power Query. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Mm, yeah, certainly. Um, we talked a little bit about Power Query. Um, I think that it's fair to say that in FP&A and actually all people that build financial models, they sometimes wonder about what are the best practices for getting inputs into the models? Um, sometimes that's really simple. Like you can just manually load the inputs in. Other times you can see people maybe linking a master file up to other Excel files, which are, which are underneath. But Power Query gives you another way to get inputs into a model. And it's definitely a more sophisticated and modern way to gather inputs. First of all, it can connect to literally any data source that you can think of. It's, in fact, it's hard to think of a data source it can't connect to. So it can establish a reliable connection to those data sources. And then what you can do is you can either, you can tell it to go refresh and fetch new data, or you can schedule your refreshes, which can be helpful. What it can also do then is once it brings the data in, usually the data is not in the form that you want. <laughs> it's come in in whatever form it happens to be in in that moment. But then you can schedule steps. You can transform this, the data in a number of steps, and it'll sequence through those same steps every single time for you and then get the data into the format that you, that you want. If people are updating their models monthly, they'll go fetch data and then they'll just spend hours transforming the data, arranging columns, deleting certain columns. And it can take a lot of time. It's better practice to use something like Power Query where you can, you can program that once and then just let it run and it'll do the same thing every month when you, um, when you, when you tell it to refresh. So a lot of people, um, it's been buried in Excel for a long time, but a lot of people don't know about it and don't use it. Right. So I, I presume I haven't, you know, taken the entire, uh, all the courses you've built, but I presume Power Query kind of permeates all of them to some extent. Yeah, we actually, we talk about it, but we don't actually use it in the course just because we wanted the course to be really simple from that perspective. We wanted to be able to deliver an Excel template to, um, anyone taking the course, and for that template to already have the data inside it that, that would be needed for the course. Um, the reason that we mentioned Power Query is because, you know, once, once a learner gets outside of that course environment and they're actually working, you know, with their team or at their financial institution, they would then want to um, look at maybe a different way of bringing the data into their own models. Okay. And I, I, I guess if someone wants to um, learn Power Query on their own or Power BI, you know, we have uh, CFI's business intelligence and data analytics course that they can refer yeah. to for that, right? We, yeah. We have a whole host of courses that, that look through the entire, the entire stack. It really starts with Power Query, and then it would go into Power Pivot, which allows you to pull different data sources together. And then those are the two main engines which make up um, Power BI. In the, in the Microsoft stack as well. If you could give our listeners three or some small number of quick tips uh, regarding model design principles mm -hmm. to keep in mind, what would they be? Yeah, the, the first, um, the main tip with model design is that you need to do it backwards, which is totally counterintuitive. Most people want to start with the inputs and then um, logically they want to go in sort of a linear chronological order all the way through thinking about all their calculations. Eventually they get to outputs. Um, but we always recommend designing backwards and essentially start with the dashboard, right? Essentially figure out what you want the dashboards to show. What questions are they trying to help people answer? What decision is it the, the executive team's trying to make? And once you get an idea of what those dashboards need to look like, then you start back solving through the model. You say, okay, well, in order to do those dashboards, if I'm going to show, say, annual estimates, quarterly estimates, monthly estimates, well, then I need um, schedules 
that are annual, quarterly, and monthly. And in order to produce all of those schedules, do I need a cash flow statement? Do I need an income statement balance sheet? And you just solve all the way backwards. Eventually, you get all the way to the inputs. You start with a dashboard and you start back solving through. Once you know that, that how the dashboards are going to look, what schedules do I need to support it? And then once you have an idea of what all those schedules are, then you back solve for the inputs that are required for those schedules. And so, um, yeah. You always Anything else in terms of principles? Always go backwards. Okay. So start mm -hmm. with the dashboards. And um, for our listeners, we, we have a complete course on um, dashboards and data visualization as well. You know, so mm -hmm. if you need skills to be, if you need to be upskilled in those areas, we have those courses. Um, any other principles before we sign off, Duncan? Um, not a principle per se, but I would, I would definitely really, really encourage everyone um, to be really open to learning the keyboard. I cannot stress that enough. I wish someone had given me that advice when I started in, in finance originally. I could have saved so much time and moved so much faster. The computer's fast and your brain is fast. The slowest part of the whole team or system is where you're interacting with it. And if you're using the mouse for that interaction, it's it, that's the bottleneck, really. So you need to, mm. it's hard. It, it takes time. It's awkward to learn the keyboard. It's going to take you a week or two, but you really want to try it and stick to it. And um, you will never regret it. I promise you that because you'll save back so much time and you'll feel so efficient and so fast on the computer. I agree. I've had the very, I've had the very same experience. So, Duncan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. This has been What's New at CFI, and we're discussing financial planning and analysis model design. And we'll have more podcasts regarding financial planning and analysis in the near future. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.